Good evening. I'm Armando Coyo, Jr., President of the Western ISD Board of Trustees. This special board meeting is being conducted pursuant to Governor Greg Abbott's suspension of certain open meeting law requirements to the extent necessary to follow or to allow for telephonic and video conference meetings in response to COVID-19. Notice that this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. The board is meeting by the use of Google Meets and telephone transmission, which allows two-way communication for members of the public during public comments. A recording of this meeting is being made and will be available to the public at a later date. The time now is 5.33, and I call this meeting to order. I'll now begin the roll call. Call these board member by name, signify your presence by saying here or present. Andrew Gonzalez? Here. Ms. Jackie Sustaita? Dr. Jaime Rodriguez? Here. Mr. Isidoro Nieto? Present. Jose Trevino? Present. And Mark de los Santos? Here. And myself, Armando Coyer. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is in attendance. Item three, public comments. Item four, discussion and possible action for the board to consider approval to increase extra duty pay for staff and provide instructional support for students during the summer recreation program. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, uh, we revisited the extra pay, uh, duty pay rate for staff that works the summer recreational program. There hasn't been any changes in the last 16 years. An increase in pay will help our principals recruit coaches for the summer school programs. Um, in addition to that, you know, our summer programs are rich. They're focused on academics, on learning recovery, but we also have a strong and safe summer rec program aimed at assisting our students, not only with uh, physical activity and physical fitness, but also mental stress. Our goal is to hire highly qualified teacher coaches to help us provide the instructional supports and the summer rec program. So we did do an analysis of the summer rec programs of uh, districts, uh, and uh, we do have um, what we're proposing. So we're proposing um, that this change is, uh, rec is effective basically for this summer rec program. Uh, I do have Mr. Riojas here. If you have any questions about this, and um, we can go from there. We have a motion to approve by Mr. Andrew Gonzalez. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Coach Jesse Trevino. Do we have, well, we have a, a motion by Mr. Gonzalez and a second by Coach Trevino to uh, consider the approval of the increase of extra duty pay for the staff that provides instructional support for students during the summer recreation program. Do we have any discussion? If none, let's take it to a vote. Signify your approval by saying aye when I call your name. I I have a question. Okay, before we go on, okay. I have a question. I know here we increase it to $25. What is it, is uh, the teacher rate? Did that get pushed up to 35 or is that at 30? For the, for the instructional program, the learning loss, the rate increase was to 35. 35. Now, for Dr. the summer. On this, are we set on this, or, or why couldn't we go up since it's yeah, been 16 it, years? Right. It's 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 our, it's our recommendation after doing the analysis, and I don't have that report, Mr. Riojas, that you sent about the districts and what they um, are paying the near the nearby districts. Um, we're moving from 18, Mr. Trevino, recommending from 18 to 25 for this year as a start. We do have different funding sources for summer school instruction support. We can uh, draw monies from, particularly from state comp for students who are at risk of failing or meet one of the other 13 or 14 indicators for at riskness. It's a special revenue that we do use mostly for summer school. The rec program, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Sanchez is, is, is funded directly from local funds and may not be as long as uh, the summer instructional program. Now, are we able to use some of the ESSA programs for, for this? No, sir. Not at, not at this time. No? No. The ESSA funds, the 12% set aside for ESSA funds uh, that we will be getting, hopefully, because we're working on that application, will be for learning loss recovery. Right. Okay. Oh, that's how you're on. Yes. 
Okay, so let's go back to taking it to a vote. Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Mr. Saita? Aye. Dr. Hamer? Aye. Sinieto? Aye. Mr. Vino? Aye. And Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Motion carries. Item five, discuss the possible action for the board to rescind the authorization of administration to solicit proposals for the administration of the district self-funded employee benefit program for fiscal year 2021-2022. Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, uh, trustees Mr. Del Santos and Mr. Gonzalez requested this item to be placed on the agenda to for us to um, rescind the authorization to go out for proposals. Our staff has done some more work on this and we have some new information to present to the Board of Trustees and another item. Okay, so at this at this time, we would ask for Mr. Los Santos to I, ask. I make a motion to rescind. Uh, to rescind uh, the uh, motion to go out for proposals. Yes. Second. And um, do we follow that with a, with a second? Second. Second by Mr. Gonzalez. Is there any discussion? If not, the I, motion. I, I did want to just clarify. We're rescinding the ASO portion only. We're still, because of the increase in the stop loss and some of the other uh, issues, it's only the ASO portion. Yes. Okay. Okay. So for the stop loss. The, no, the, no, the ASO. Right. That's all. Okay. Um, Mr. Santos is asked to rescind that motion. Right. And Mr. Gonzalez will second it. Do we have any discussion? Okay, let's take it to a vote on the motion to rescind. Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Mr. Saita? Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. Senieto? Aye. Jose Vino? Aye. And Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Okay, the motion carries to rescind. Now, item six. Discussion and possible action for the board to consider renewal of the Blue Cross and Blue Shields proposal to administer the district's self-funded employee benefit program for the fiscal year 2021-2022, Dr. Canales. Board of Trustees, at the time that you took the action to solic solicit proposals, the district had not received the renewal with adequate time to conduct a formal evaluation of the proposal. Additionally, there were some contractual issues that we wanted to work on. Work on. Uh, but after additional review, the medical and renewal offer is acceptable to the district. Based on a rolling 12-month average, Blue Cross Blue Shield is projecting medical claims to be about $11,117,000, which is slightly higher than current year's projected claims of $11,088,000 plus dollars for the 2020-2021 school year. So um, based on the current offer for medical ASA, S ASO only, administration uh, is recommending the approval of the Blue Cross Blue Shield renewal. Approved. We second. have a motion to approve by Mr. De Los Santos and a second by Mr. Gonzalez. Okay, we have the motion by Mr. De Los Santos, second by Mr. Gonzalez to consider the renewal of the Blue Cross Blue Shield proposal to administer the district self-funded employee benefit program for fiscal year 2021-2022. Do we have any discussion? Yes, uh, Mr. Sepulveda. I, I just want to confirm, obviously, we went out uh, for the RFP based on language. Has that been taken care of? I do believe so, Ines. Uh, okay, so Lopeza. I just, for the record, so that people know, this is why Mr. De Los Santos and I asked for the previous item to be back so that we could keep Blue Cross because they came to terms yes, they with did. our terms. Okay, yes. thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. We're talking about clarity and we're on that topic. I just want to make it very clear to the community and to whoever's listening to the, this uh, meeting. We heard a lot of the new board wants to get rid of Blue Cross Blue Shield. The new board wants to go out for proposals. I don't know what that was about, but I don't want to come out and say I'm very upset or I don't know what's being planted, but the reason why we said, okay, let's go out for proposals was because we trust in our 
administration and the cabinet. Now, if people weren't happy about going out for proposals, we weren't aware of that. And I just want to make it very clear that this came not from the new board, as has been said, but because we thought, as what we were told, that this would be beneficial to our, our district. So I just wanted to make that clear to everybody. And that's uh, but that that good point, Mr. Stifler, because the we all voted for correct. And uh, yes, sir. once once we had a better understanding of of, uh, of what exactly was going on, it was addressed, it was taken care of, and that's why we're here today, because we want to ensure that our our staff, our employees, are are taken care of with everything that they need, you know, with their uh, with their insurance. And uh, I even asked the question, you know. In spite of, because we know things go up. That that just that's just the the way things are. Cost of living. That our employees don't have to come up with anything more than they're already paying out of their pocket. So, uh, Mr. La Rosa and I talked about this, and he says we can't guarantee anything, but if anything, it will be minimal. Is it safe to say that, if anything, or am I out of order with that? Okay. What is what is the amount that the staff has to pay? currently under this new uh, old proposal? Employee. Right so, so they're paying 28. 28. 28. 28. So if it goes up, it'll be very minimal. Hopefully. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, at this point, there are no plans to increase employee contributions, okay. uh, at least for this coming plan year. We'll, we'll have to see year by year how it goes. But at this time, there's no plans to increase employee contributions. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Any further discussion? Yeah, I'd just like to say that, like I said, like uh, Ms. Ustaita was saying, it's, a, it's very important because this was this is a very important topic because this is a service that belongs to our employees. And I know that there was a, a, uh, a lot of outreach. I think everybody expressed that. All board members had outreach after we had voted uh, according to, to administrative recommendations based off of, you know, items that were considered deal breakers. And obviously that wasn't the case because they were resolved within a matter of days. And, and like I said, I just wanted to put it out there that when things come to the board, you know, it's our job because I understand that some people say, well, there's a lot, you know, some of the members ask, you know, you ask too many questions or, you, you know, dig is the word a lot, but that's our job. Our job as a school board is to represent the community and part of the community is our staff as well. And so that's going to happen every single, every single time something comes across the table. And that's what we did in this situation. And they was able to get resolved in, within a timely manner. And now we're able to move forward and provide good product to, to, to our staff. But we need to make sure that, that every time we have something like as critical as this is that we, we try everything we can to mediate it, especially with the timeline. I'm not happy with the timeline. I've already said that publicly. We're, you know, I was told uh, in December in our workshop that this was going to get done at, at the end of March and April, and then it, it got brought to the table in May. And so maybe for the next year, or whenever this topic comes up again, that we're, and with any situation that we're given an ample window that we can work on this because it was really crunch time. It was the eleventh hour, and we and we had and, and and I know on your side, administrative side and whatnot, you know things got done and it got done quickly. That's good, but we should have never even got to that point of having that first meeting and having to take that action. So that's something that I, I would like to just put out there is, is let's, let's let's try everything that we can, especially when we have a resource that they like. And I love for staff to be surveyed. I love to have feedback from them as well, too, on products, especially any upcoming products that, be, that belong to them and having their input, you know. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. For, for myself, uh, since, it was, uh, since it was put out there that it was a new board, you know, uh, how can I put this? nicely you know we this is a small community and we hear it all you know i i don't like if, if people have something to say about me out there they need to let me know and, and bring it to my attention when we have people within our circle here bad mouthing a hey, new board wanted it blah 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 they don't know blah 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 uh, you know there's no need for that, you know, especially when we walk into this, you know, we walked into supposedly a lot of problems and they get resolved in less than a week. So I don't know how big the problems were. Uh, well, we, we do, we do know, but they were solved obviously within a week. So 
I don't appreciate being out there and, oh, the new board, the new board, the new board. We have enough people contacting us. And if you have any comments or if you, I mean, I, I put my number out there for everybody. Call me. Let me know. So I just don't appreciate that when, when it's a small community and we hear it all. So I'm just putting it out there for everybody to understand if you're bad about bad mouthing me, let me know in person. If you have something uh, to address with me, let me know personally, because obviously there's a resolution to all of this. You know, here we got put in this position where, oh, the, the, the board wanted this. We went off of your, the recommendation from you guys, not anybody else's recommendation. And obviously now we're rescinding the vote and we're approving Blue Cross Blue Shield because that is the popular that is the best, what's best for the district. So and I just wanted to put that on. And that's a good point, Mr. Trevino, but it was a unanimous vote, like Ms. Jackie said, you know, or Coach Cuellar said, it was a unanimous vote when we, we went out for proposals. That was unanimous. And again, rescinding unanimous and now approving is unanimous again. Yeah. Yes, you're right, Mr. Nieto, but no, and we were guided in that direction. Correct. You know, and, and yes. I think you guys have a responsibility of, of bringing information to us that's, that's the most accurate information at the most timely manner so that we don't get put in that position where, you know, we, now we're having to rescind this because it, and, and in true essence, this was the best way to go. And it did have a resolution. And so. again, people shouldn't have said, have said it was the new board. Since it was unanimous, it was all of us together. You know, so. Also, not just the new board, but the sense of trust. We've been through, uh, you know, trainings where it's a team of eight. We have our administration and cabinet here who we have to trust each other and we have to work together for the betterment of our community. And when I feel that I have to push somebody up against the wall to do something or, hey, you better do this or what's going on, and then things get done, it gives a sense of mistrust or can I, val can I really trust what you're telling me is what you're going to do or it's the best effort you've done it it creates that uh, i don't mistrust and that's what we want to avoid and we want to build a better team and in order to do that we have to be clear and upfront and, and and say the truth about everything not only for ourselves but for our community because they're the ones our district our staff they're the ones not us it's not our personal gain it's for them so we need to really i think work on that together all right. Points, points well, well, well taken, and like, like I said, you know, uh, brought to light that this was a, a uh, un unanimous decision. And from my point of view, you know, I, I, I am the, the board president, and it is my responsibility to, to uh, keep us focused on what's best for the school district. Not that we're going to agree on things uh, all the time, because. Uh, you know, everyone has a, a right to their opinion. But in essence, we've had time to to work together. And uh, if you've been keeping up with what's going on, we are really, really uh, um, coming together as a board because when it comes down to it, you know, we're the ones that are going to be making decisions for this school district. And I don't believe that anyone here is going to do anything in that is not in the best interest of the school district and i and and i said in a in a uh a board training that uh something we use in the locker room of you know if you were in a situation where somebody had to hold on to a rope and you're at the end of that rope do you trust anyone in this board with that rope and i said yes i think when it comes to it when you put everything into perspective anyone here is going to come to the aid of anybody here when it really matters so i really really believe in everyone here i know that we're going to continue to do what's best for this school district and uh whatever anybody thinks out there this is not a new board this is a, a board with dr canales a, that makes a team of eight and we're going to work very hard to keep that in perspective so with that being said um I appreciate everybody here, and, and uh, I, I respect everyone's opinion. And whatever you all think out there, I think it's a courtesy, a common courtesy to uh, uh, share concerns, but share them uh, 
in a in a way that um, we're not throwing like a, in our culture tira la tira esconde la mano you know <laughs> be upfront yeah, we're, not, we're, we're not here for nothing else but doing what's best for everyone out there and for our community because that's that's what's important to all of us mr president if i may may see a few words may i uh just a few words uh, from the timeline provided by our staff in here, the renewal offer came in the Thursday before the May 10th and needed some time to move through it. There were two items on the contract that were questionable that were worked through. Um, sometimes we, sometimes the renewals come in at the last minute. You know, we can do our best to make sure that we get them with plenty of bed time in the future you know, and request them so that we have it before you in the future so that we don't have to find ourselves here. But uh, it did come in. So May 10th was a meeting. So whatever that Thursday was before is when we got the renewal. And so, you know, to the people that we work with and our vendors, you know, we, we count on timely receipt of information. So uh, we can do a thorough analysis and then bring and try to work out any kinks, you know, in the end so we can bring you, here's the, you know, best and final, you know, from administration. So we apologize, you know, for any inconvenience that you experienced. And um, so thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hines. If we have no further discussion, let's uh, bring the item to a vote. Dr. Canales did mention right now on her statement, she's just said about vendors. So when, re when we renew this uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, I know that we've had this discussion, but for anybody in our community who's watching the meeting and isn't too clear on that, how many agents do we have uh, working with us on Blue Cross, our, our insurance? Three, three agents. Okay. Last year, there I believe it was last year, when we went over to Blue Cross Blue Shield, there was an item in our agenda, and it said something about discussion, possible action to select agents. Mm -hmm. Will that come up later on for us, or how did we come about with that? We just want to make the community aware. And Is clear. this something that we can discuss? Uh, okay. Uh, that item was brought on uh, by uh, uh, members of the board. I'd have to go back and uh, check the minutes to see who actually uh, put that item on the agenda, but similar to the way uh, Mr. Dos Santos and Mr. Gonzalez put uh, the rescind item on the agenda in the same manner uh, some time ago, there was an item put on by board members to name these agents. Okay, yeah, but the question wasn't who. It was just that item was on the agenda, and it's not here today on this no, one as uh, we renew Blue Cross. You're renewing everything. So okay. that, that includes um, whatever um, uh, those the three agents that were included, it includes that as well. And we can always go back and just talk about that later on. Sure. Because we have until look. Just wanting to make sure. And for clarification, they, the way it's been explained to me, and Mr. Rosa can add more, they're called enrollers, not not agents for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Is that correct? Well, technically, yes, that's that's correct. But, but they, they perform the same, one of the same function, agents, enrollers. I mean, it's... Okay. And we have three so that the community knows when they're listening because they do listen. Yes. Okay. 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 One more. You mentioned that the renewal application came in in May, right before our board meeting, correct? But the concerns with the renewal application were identified earlier. Because oh, that's what we were told in the executive that they oh, were yes. identified in February, or late February, I think maybe early March, if I remember correctly, from the presentation uh, in our workshop. In the second workshop that I had with you and Mr. Garza, I remember. I think that you had stated that it was back in late February, maybe early March. Where April of April of 2020, the board, uh, there was an RFP uh, huh. for third-party administrative services, and at that time, Blue Cross Blue Shield was selected. So that was during the April board meeting, uh, again, we were out to bid. So April, May of 2020, you start looking at the contract, and um, but we were totally involved in the COVID crisis. So hmm. that, those concerns kind of got, for lack of a better term, got put on the, on the back burner while we addressed all the COVID procedures and policies and everything that we did. So as we got later in the year, it started coming back. Uh, we had hired the, the, the board hired new counsel. So there would needed to be time to, to, to brief Mr. Sapula and, and go over that with them. So that is why we, you know, it's not like we weren't aware of it, but you know, fortunately the COVID and the other timeline. circumstances kind of, you know, put that on the back burner. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. 
Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Okay, let's uh, take it to a vote. Signify your approval by saying I want to call your name. Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Mr. Saita? Aye. Dr. Luis? Aye. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Mr. Vino? Aye. Uh, Mr. Lozano? Aye. Motion carries. Item seven, discussing the possible action on local clinic partnerships, Rio Grande Valley Vax, curative local pharmacies, for the vaccination of children 12 years and over to be provided on district property and or other sites. Dr. Gonzalez. Board of Trustees, as we prepare for the new school year and we look at information regarding COVID-19, the Food and Drug Administration uh, has authorized Pfizer, Pfizer uh, their vaccine for children 12 to 15 years old, enabling millions of more of Americans, including children that age in our community, to be immunized. Dr. Sandra Garcia and our nurse coordinator, Susan Kaufman, have been in communication with Hidalgo County, HHD, the Westlake Fire Department, Curative, RG, VVAX, to establish a plan to ensure that all students over 12 years old whose parents want them to have access to vaccines, do have access to vaccines in a timely and efficient manner. So what we'd like to do is I'm asking the board to delegate the authority to me to execute contracts with local clinic partnerships so that we don't have to wait for another board meeting in an effort to provide our parents access to vaccination clinics for their children. Any contract, any MOU, interlocal agreement with anybody who says we can offer this service to your community uh, will be uh, reviewed by legal counsel prior to me signing it. So um, Mrs. Saita had requested this item. Mr. Trevino, when I talked to him, you know, had also, it's something good. It will save us time. And again, anything that I sign will be reviewed by legal counsel, Mr. Sepulveda. So I'm recommending that you approve this. I'll move to approve. I second. Okay, we have Dr. Rodriguez. Motion and a second by uh, Mrs. Saita. Okay, to uh, take action on the local clinic partnerships with RGV Vax, curative local pharmacies for the vaccination of children 12 years and over to be provided on the district property and other sites. Any discussion? Um, curative. Uh, isn't curative the testing center? They don't do any tests? Yeah. Isn't that the one that's parked over there in front of the high yeah. school? That's the one that we've got to put the wall back for, for testing. For the PCR test. Yes, right. Yeah. So they'll, they'll be giving vaccines now. Oh, yeah, sure. They've approached us yeah, about vaccines as well, sir. And But all these services are free. They don't cost the district anything. With curative, Mr. Joe Rosa, can you explain how curative works with the vaccines? So the way it would work, uh, Mr. Zondo, the curative, in the same way that the uh, testing facilities work, um, Individuals, people sign up online, uh, they enter their insurance information, uh, and then they go and get the tests and the insurance is charged. Whatever whatever um, form of payment that the, that the the individual has, whether it be insurance, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, and if they don't have any of those, then it is billed to, uh, to the federal government. But nobody ever gets a direct bill, you know, for the cost of the vaccine. And I, I haven't seen the other contract, but mm -hmm. they all they all operate the same way. Okay. CDS. Uh, Walgreens, it's the same thing. Okay. Well, they'll, they'll build the insurance. Right. No bill to, to, as of right now. Mr. De La Rosa. Yes, sir. Now, I know you said online. Will we have something on our website where parents can go on to either of the companies uh, to do it? I did the I did the initial work with the contracting, uh, but Dr. Garcia's team has taken over that, so he'll be handling the uh, uh Okay, the just public, so we can let, information side let our parents know that they can go visit our website. Uh, you know, I went through the Walgreens once to take my oldest and it was pretty quick. You know, we were in and out within yeah. 30 minutes, but uh, just make it available to our parents, please. A lot of companies, Walgreens, CVS, yeah, there's more and more players. So it's okay. fairly simple to get it. To add to, to that, uh, we do have a survey. We're surveying all our parents. It, it looks like it's a long survey, but we promise our parents it's not long. It's, are you interested? Will you bring them? What school does your child go to? And then there's several, like if Casey has more than one child, so you can answer for every single one of them. And Mr. Gar uh, Dr. Garcia and Ms. Kaufman have already met with Mr. Robledo to talk about the communications and putting the information out there about what's being offered and when, so that 
you know, every single parent who wants their child to take advantage of this opportunity has the information that's needed. Tack here, but I'm trying to hold myself. The reason why, let me give you a little bit of background, why I asked for this to be on the agenda tonight, because as you know, Mr. Lulerosa, the community reaches out to us as school board members. We're the bridge between the community and, and the district. RGV Vax is one of them who is part of our community locally, free vaccines. And I know they were trying to reach out to set something up because they already did with the city of Westlaco. And they were interested with Westlaco ISD. Said, hey, we want to set something up with you guys. But nothing happened. And they called. I followed up. Have you heard of email, phone call? Nothing. So to me, we're in a pandemic. This is of utmost importance to get our kids vaccinated. If I know not everybody wants to, but a lot of people do. So we have to treat this as priority. And I just felt that we weren't moving on this as quick as we could. This is a local clinic. We have to just, you know, work better, work faster for the sake of these kids. And this is the reason why we said, let's do this and let's just have the superintendent sign off and do what she has to to work for our kids. So this is the, the reason why this is on here. And I'm excited to see that we can do something. And Dr. Garcia. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Stegdon. Pretty loud. And, and uh, point well taken. Um, I, we did meet with the gentleman with Rudy. I believe his first name is we met with him on Friday. So uh, again, we apologize. You know, you're very well a point, very well taken. And we're working on it already. So. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. of course. Now, this may or may not be the time to, to bring us up, but might as well. When we begin school, you know how sometimes um, students are not allowed to enroll because they haven't had certain vaccinations. How is this going to play into that enrollment procedure? We, we talked about that and we've talked about the possibility of hearing from the health officials, CDC and TA about, about it becoming part of standard immunization. So right now we don't have any information about that, but Mr. De Rosa and Ms. Kaufman and Dr. Garcia have been these, keeping their eyes on that. These Mr. vaccines Rosa. are on the emergency approval from the FDA. So once they get the official vetted seal of approval from the FDA, then we could consider the district can consider, or even it's from the local mandated by the local health authority that they make these vaccinations, you know, made available like you know the, the other ones are now as kids kids carry on their little vaccine card yeah. but right now yeah. because of the emergency authorization we cannot mandate it or require it okay. but we can certainly you know uh, recommend it and push it out currently there's senate bill 1669 that's in committee i'm sorry excuse me please that's miss kaufman speaking she's online um currently there's house bill 1669 that's in committee and it is uh, being discussed that there will be no passport needed for any type of um, immunization. So until that is either voted out or voted in, the immunizations of all kind are kind of up in the air until then. Thank you. Currently, you have students that are in our district. I know in other districts that their parents, they, they, they may not have gotten vaccinated at all. With, with other vaccinations. So, I mean, that's that's a very difficult topic there. Uh, and I think that one that, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you personally, I, I don't think it belongs in our court, you know, as far as mandatory. Like, let's say the state doesn't do it, the TA doesn't do it, and the state doesn't do it. I mean, with that, are you talking, are you all talking about something locally, like a local policy or, or for like va vaccination? Were you asking about mandatory vaccinations, like for all students, is that what they were asking? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. That's what you were saying, Monday. Yeah. I'm. Oh. I'm asking. You know. Like, oh, like, like in the like states, we the, we yeah. have. We, we call them booster shots. You know. Right. Uh, when when they get into the in, 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 to enroll. Okay. Uh, the health part of it is that they that that they're required to have certain vaccinations right. before they can get, uh, or they're allowed to to, to enroll. Mm -hmm. So, given that, now okay. that we have this this uh, new right. um, as, as an addition vaccination that's out there is it going to be an issue when we come back to school because there are some that will not will and refuse to take the uh, vaccine you know right. and uh but you have to respect that but yes. is that going to be an issue with not allowing students to 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 enroll so mm -hmm. it's something that uh, 
we want to maybe prepare for so that we don't have uh it's hard enough to get start the school year started because you know but to have uh the unknowns about something like like this is something we want to prepare for i, I think, think. Coach, uh, quite a, i think in one of the sessions also they mentioned and we discussed it about staff being vaccinated and are we going to have something in policy or is it just going to be administrative and say you have to be vaccinated before you start working? Uh, we had a discussion there in one of the sessions, but uh, we don't have the TA guidelines yet on to see if we can do that. So very similar to with the students too. But the staff, I think the staff is is that's a critical uh, point right there for them to be vaccinated before they come back. Do we have numbers on that, ma'am? I know that we're you were tracking more or less the percentages per campus. Is there anything uh, like an update as far as Kaufman, who was? Um, I would say seventy-five to eighty percent of the staff are vaccinated. Okay. And it's also but important to note that OSHA just passed a law that any employer who mandates the COVID vaccine as part of employment requirements is responsible for all medical and any other consequences of getting that vaccination. Clarify that again, Ms. Kaufman. I didn't hear the first part. Um, OSHA. Okay. Um, just passed a bill that said that if an employer mandates an employee to get the COVID vaccine, then they assume responsibility for any side effects or any problems they have from getting that vaccine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, Ms. Kaufman, so if an employee gets the virus who is not vaccinated at work, we're not responsible either because they're not vaccinated and they got sick from work? I would That, that would make sense, but I haven't seen anything like that in writing. Right. Okay. Okay. And it's all based on because it's experimental. There's a lot of side effects that are coming out. Um, people are having cardiac issues, they're having stomach issues, um, anyone that had an immune issue that, that it's triggering a increase in those symptoms. So until we have more data, I don't, I don't think we'll know that answer. You know, I was going to ask, ma'am, like now that we're on the topic about vaccinations for, for our youth that come here, I, I think I would like a presentation maybe from our medical professionals and see what, what, what opinion they have. Um, you know, I, I have young kids as well, and 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 that's something that's still up in the air. And I think, I mean, as a board, before we make decisions on, on moving forward, I mean, for me, what what data is out there? What what medical data is out there? These vaccinations, how long has study? What studies have been done? Have there been trials? Uh, well, you know, because we're kind of we're, we're I think right now we're looking at okay, let's partner up with with other agencies to offer mass vaccination to kids. But I honestly don't have any 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 medical data, or have or haven't looked at it, or haven't found any that shows studies and effects. And like like uh, Scoffman just said right now, we're, we're seeing it, we're seeing some issues in some people that are adults. And, and I wonder, is there any information out there for for youth? To uh, date, no. Um, it's interesting. RGV Vax did a vaccine clinic with us last Tuesday, and they only had 165 students show up. I think that everyone's a little leery and not understanding it. I um, reviewed the CDC and they are convinced it's safe and that readily available and that children can get it. When Dr. Oak spoke to the, um, yeah, yeah. the town hall meeting, town she hall, recommended yeah. that people with children who have compromised immune systems get it. She never mentioned anything about um, Healthy children. Um, her take is that healthy children do well. They're not super spreaders. Um, but she probably would, if anyone could provide the data for it, we would go to her for that. You see that they had it last week. I wasn't even aware of that. So I'm thinking if we are going to partner up with these people, the way we get the, the information out to parents is really important. Uh, for example, I know I get phone calls all the time from the school system, the, the, the phone call system. That would be a great way. I know you guys use Facebook sometimes to, to put the events on there. I don't know what other ways we can get the information out there because not everybody has Facebook. Not everybody answers their phone. We want to do the best possible job we can to get the information out there because 
knowledge, the, the more they know, the more I think it's not so much that they don't want to. It's I didn't even know it was happening. I didn't even know they were offering the clinic. You last know, week, getting last the week, word out. Last week we had it on our website. The city had it on their website. What we were going to do if we do partner with our when we do partner with other people is we're going to do phone calls so we can do a blast. Like you said, a lot of people don't look on Facebook, don't have um, a web things, but everyone has, most everyone has a phone mm -hmm. and we'll do emails also. I'm going to say this is like that probably one of the reasons why we had low numbers was because the information didn't get out there mm -hmm. as much. So one of the things that we uh, talked about on Friday when we met with, with back, uh, RGB backs is using different uh, ways of promoting it. For example, I've been telling the campuses we need to start promoting it also for uh, on the marquee. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, unfortunately, some of the marquees are down. So we're trying to uh, get them fixed so that this information can get out there. But there's different sources of uh, or different uh, means in which we can promote this information. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. And we'll we'll work on that because in addition to getting it out there for parents that may have concerns, you know, the vaccination may be too new, you know, setting up a link or something for them to connect to for more information about vaccinations for children from the CDC, you know, we can do that on our websites things because we want our parents to make informed decisions um, for their children. Okay, I want to I want to come in. Uh, I know this RGV Vax was something that was, was put together there very, very urgently there towards the end of uh, this past Friday. And, you know, but I don't, I, again, it goes back to, I don't think it needs to get to that point. I think, uh, you know, these resources are out there and we need to do a, a better job of uh, bringing these resources to us so that we have the, the opportunity to make these approvals and so forth. And, and obviously bring this information to the community. Let me ask you, is, is the survey in Spanish? I know we talked about a survey. It is in Spanish. Yes, would you like to, you know, take the survey in English or Spanish? You click one and that'll take you. Excellent. What about uh, just the, the, the rest of the information, you know, uh, it, it, you know, in the Facebook and all that? Do, are we providing some of this information in Spanish as well about the vaccine? Typically do, uh, Mr. Trevino, any, we have three tra uh, translators, including myself. Yes. So uh, any information that goes out, typically it goes out in both languages. So yes. Okay, excellent. So we'll make sure that the information goes out by the English. Excellent. Yeah, with like local news channels, Channel 5, Channel 4, everybody watches TV, you know, get get a little art story on there and have somebody, what's the quiet he's offering vaccines for students and just really have people put it out there. And TV is a great way too. Doctor, is there okay. any, is our board meetings are all strictly in English, right? Or, or any, is any of this information in Spanish available to, uh, available in Spanish? No, we, there is. <laughs> there we go. We have another translator. <laughs> Very difficult to translate into it. Now it, there's a lot of me, uh, ways to it, translate it. Yeah, it, it would be a challenge to, you know, if our board meetings are long, every single word to be translated. Mm -hmm. But if we had to, like, we do the minutes, but it's after the fact, you know, and then you approve the minutes, then we can put them out, you know, just in case there were some of the minutes that is unclear, uh, then we can put them out, but it would be after you know, after the fact. So, but maybe we could identify important points, you know, from board meetings that we need to uh, use social media to communicate to yes. our entire community or different segments and say, these need to be, do some little bullets and some little highlights, you know, on face, whatever we're going to use and include it also in Spanish because they're that important. Yes. We, we can work on Many of our like community that. members, you know, still well, only speak Spanish. So I, I think that would be something to look forward to looking into. Good point. All right. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take it to a vote. Signify your approval by saying aye when I call your name. Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Mrs. Sutaita? Aye. Mr. Jaime Rodríguez? Aye. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Jose Luis? Aye. Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Motion carries. Item 8. Close meeting to discuss. A. 
Personnel matters, Texas Government Code 551.074. One, employment of personnel, certified professional or non-contractual personnel. Two, resignations. Three, deliberation regarding the appointments, employment, valuation, reassignments, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee. Texas Government Code 551.074 and 551.071. B, consultation with attorney regarding a pending or contemplated litigation, B, a settlement offer, or C, a matter in which the uh, duty of the attorney to the Western ISD under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Texas Government Code 551.074. The time now is 618, and we will go into closed session. The time now is 7.34, and we're back in open meeting. Item A, possible action if necessary on items discussed in close meeting. Number one, discussing and possible action on new employment certified personnel, both professional and non-contractual personnel. Dr. Granada. Board of Trustees, I ask that you approve the um, employment of personnel certified and professional Certified professional and non-contractual per personnel as discussed in closed session. So move. I have a motion by second. Dr. Rodriguez and a second by Mr. Los Santos. Let's take it to a vote and uh, signify your approval by saying I want to call your name. Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Mrs. Saita? Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Los Santos? Aye. Motion carries. Number two, discuss it and possible action on resignations, Dr. Gonzalez. Board of Trustees, I ask that you approve the resignation that's discussed in closed session. So move. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Nieto and a second by Mr. Gonzalez. Let's uh, take it to a vote. You signify your approval by saying I want to call your name. Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Mr. Saita? Aye. Dr. Rodriguez? Aye. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Savino? Aye. Mr. De Los Santos? Aye. Motion carries. That takes us to item 10, adjournment. So moved. The time now is 7.36, and we are adjourned.